All righty. Welcome back, everybody. Yeah, we're back. I hope that you have been having as much fun as we have uh, with these talks and with these with this conference in general. Can I get a couple of hands up emojis in the chat, please? Uh, I'm having a blast. <laughs> so uh, let's head into our next talk. Before that, we'll have our final developer dilemma of the day. The developer dilemma is, do you prefer to work remote or in an office? Jump in. We're going to put that link into the YouTube chat. Let us know. Eager to know. So, Raita, who's next? Our next speaker is uh, Alison. Um, let's get her in the studio. Hi, Alison. Hi. Hello. Nice to have you here. Um, so, Alison, uh, she is no stranger to virtual conferences, and she's a Mozilla tech speaker. Um, director of engineering at GitHub, a developer, a, a mom, former Rails Girls Washington. Wow, do you have even do you even have spare time? Uh, creator of the Parent Driven Development podcast, and today she'll illuminate us uh, on how working as a parent has been affected by these turbulent times. I can't wait. Alison, take it away. Excellent. Thanks so much for having me. So today we're living in a completely different world than we were only a few months ago. And the choices that we're making, the way that, that we're living our day-to-day -day lives, everything has changed and it all changed really quickly. This new way of living is tough for everyone. And as we navigate this pandemic around the world, you don't have to look very far to see that working parents and mothers in particular are drowning. Article after article after article highlights the long-term effects. We're expected to wear so many different hats right now. I mean, even as I'm delivering this talk, I am waiting for information about my daughter's preschool reopening, which is supposed to start next week, um, and my son's virtual kindergarten schedule, login, et cetera. I'm sure all of that will go amazingly. Um, and doing all of this while working, doing grocery shops for my mom, navigating our overall family's health and well-being, and more. Every day is a sprint of decision-making and new situations that I need to make decisions about or react to. But this is also not a sprint. It's a marathon. And you can only run that fast for so long before burning out. I have two wonderful children, uh, a five-year-old and a two-year-old. They have both become very good mask wearers. Um, and uh, like my intro said, I'm also, I work at GitHub as a director of engineering. Um, I work on code spaces and a variety of other teams. I'm on the board of Ruby Central, where the CFP is currently open to speak at RubyConf. Um, I'm a Mozilla tech speaker, and I run a podcast called Parent Driven Development about being a parent in tech. Now, not all of the problems that we're seeing are completely new. Uh, when I first went back to work after having my son, it was after only six weeks and it was intense. There was so much that I was struggling with and the isolation of being a parent in tech, the challenges of balancing it all. Um, if I'm being really honest, there are times in the last handful of years where I just wasn't sure if I could remain in tech and be a successful mom. I thought about leaving tech more than once and going back to different fields or positions that I could do well or could do a little bit more on autopilot. You see cute pictures of parent life or kids on Facebook or Instagram, but it's not always like that. And for me, especially in the early days of both kids, it wasn't usually like that. It was hard and tiring and frustrating. It was also amazing and all-encompassing and sometimes really lonely. I reached out to other parents to ask questions, which led to me putting together a survey. So here's a little bit of what I found. In an industry that values open source contributions, GitHub as your resume, and keeping up to date with the most recent programming developments, parents were already struggling. They were challenged by job interviews that sent, that sent home code challenges saying, don't worry, it should only take four to six hours of focus time to complete. Do you know when the last time that I had six straight hours of focus time outside of my workday was? I think it was about five and a half years ago before my son was born. 
And they were also challenged with staying sharp. A study from Outlet Baby Care found that parents lose a total of 44 days of sleep in their child's first year. And a newer study found that parents are sleep deprived for six years after they have a child. And again, all of this was pre-pandemic, where at least we could head to our easier day jobs. When I asked if having children helped or hurt their career, only a small portion of respondents self-identifying as fathers said that it had hurt their career. They felt it either helped or had a neutral impact. About 60% of respondents uh, self-identifying as women, though, said that having children hurt their career, and even more said that it didn't hurt their career, but it changed it. Um, many women said that it slowed their career, affecting their overall trajectory and growth potential. Now, I venture to say that those changes are actually, in fact, hurting mothers' careers. So here's the total breakdown of parents based on if they felt that having a child helped, hurt, had no impact, or both helped and hurt their career. And here are those same choices based on uh, mom identifying answers or dad identifying answers. So as you can see, while well, in this last one, the pieces are pretty even, um, when you break it down, it's much different. And one thing that I do want to note here is that I don't have this information breakdown for uh, non-binary folks or for respondents who don't identify as a mother or a father because I don't have enough survey results yet from that population. And this data is backed up by additional research. This 2018 study on children and gender inequality in Denmark shows these results based on gender and earnings. So given all of those challenges, I wanted to talk about some solutions or some things that might help, especially now in these, in these COVID times. So we'll start with some company-based solutions. First, allowing flexible, creative, or unconventional work options. So I'm going to mostly bypass remote work for now, since many of us are working remotely. But if you're not actively offering that already, it's definitely a must have. Many parents right now aren't just dealing with the regular benefits of working remote, right? Like it's not just having to take into account time for commuting, et cetera. But even for places where schools and childcare facilities are reopening, they're reopening with an incredible amount of rules and restrictions. And I'll say that I'm all for these rules. Uh, we tend to be more cautious than, than some of the folks around us. Um, but I also realize the burden of needing to keep a toddler home when they just have a runny nose. Like if my daughter ends up going back to preschool, I'm sort of wondering if she'll even be there at all between the months of October and March when a runny nose is pretty much the norm. And for those with school-aged children at home, even older kids need some sort of extra attention or supervision, and that need increases the younger the child is. Most adults I know have a difficult time spending hours per day in Zoom meetings, and so we need to be empathetic with our little ones and with the parents supporting them. And what creative working solutions or hours looks like will be different for different parents and kids at different ages. For companies looking at what can be offered, there's no one size fits all here. Second, companies can take a much more proactive role in creating support systems. A simple example might include a parenting Slack channel where parents can share experiences, issues, and resources with one another. Another more involved option might be to connect parents with kids who have, uh, with kids of similar ages who are trying to figure out similar things. So a hot topic right now for us at work is looking for shared resources on worksheets or homeschooling or literally anything that keeps our children engaged for more than five minutes at a time. Um, and so setting up these structures allows it to be safer space for folks to discuss these successes, issues, and challenges. Finally, train managers. So managers will play some of the biggest roles in this pandemic at the moment in terms of determining whether parents stay or leave. Managers set the tone for boundaries on teams, for working hours, for meeting cadence, and for expectations in general. Managers must be trained on how to be accommodating, how to have constructive and empathetic conversations, and how to support their employees through this time. Third, create realistic expectations for parents at work. 
So if your company operates off of KPIs or goal setting, recognize that these goals should be different this year. For parents, encourage small goals. Help them determine how much they can realistically accomplish and do not penalize them for being able to accomplish, accomplish less this year or setting more realistic, which can be viewed as lower, expectations for work-related goals. Retaining parents in your workforce is incredibly beneficial and incredibly important. And if your company doesn't have a good answer right now for the question, how are you supporting employees during this pandemic, then you have some thinking to do. If you're a manager, encourage realistic goal setting. So again, this goes back to supporting and retaining your employees long term. Work with them and let them dictate what's realistic right now. So again, these solutions are creative working options, support systems, and realistic expectations. These items, when put into place, have positive benefits for the entire company. The open acceptance of diversity and intentional support around the uniqueness of a teammate's life creates that atmosphere on a team. As managers and company employees are trained to establish and seek out things like support systems or create realistic expectations, anyone going through any sort of hardship or life adjustment feels supported. And once you've created these systems and benefits, it's easier to see how similar accommodations for others enable teams to really thrive. Support systems could help folks from burning out and normalizing being open about struggles and successes makes it more likely that somebody who is burning out will speak up earlier. Realistic expectations encourage teams to craft better guidelines around work and promotions, which often help underrepresented minorities succeed. And creative working options help companies attract the, uh, attract the best talent regardless of where they reside. There are also things that we could and should be doing as parents. First, get rid of your parent guilt. I know it's easier said than done. There is so much parent guilt right now. There's so much that we can't do with our kids and so much that we have to let drop so that we can balance it all. But that's simply the reality of the situation at the moment. We need to realize that working and doing things that we love is, is still important for us and for our children to see. Next, schedule self-care days. It took me a long time pre-pandemic to do this, but now with the pandemic, a lot of folks aren't taking time off because you can't really go anywhere. But taking time off is critical. I took a week off in June where one day my only goal was to take my Nintendo Switch and walk into the woods and play Animal Crossing for as many hours as I wished. My partner and I have been working out breaks over the last few months, just a chance to not be on duty for a full 24 hours. It's important to not put off these days and to make sure that you're taking time to recharge. Third, we can only make this better if we're united. At work, we have a parenting channel, and so many folks have said that the existence of that channel and being able to share ideas, stories, hacks, and struggles with one another has been incredibly helpful. We're also in the process of establishing a new parents ERG or employee resource group so that we can come together and focus on what parents need. Being able to speak with one another and share challenges, solutions, and suggestions is invaluable. Just like having a support group when you have a newborn, supporting one another as parents in tech makes us stronger and better and gives us a more united voice. Next, share the mental load. So I'm going to talk about moms specifically um, because mothers are dis disproportionately affected by the weight of mental load, um, although this happens in non-hetero partnerships as well. In 2015, a Pew Research Center uh, study surveyed uh, 1,800 parents in households where they both work. They asked, who does the work of managing your children's schedules and activities? And who takes care of the kids when they're sick? There have been dozens of articles about the amount of mental load, among other things, that primary caregivers are experiencing right now. 
In addition to this headline, another article stated that millennial mothers are nearly three times more likely than millennial fathers to report being unable to work due to a school or child care closure, even though in the U.S., more than 60% of mothers are now the sole or co-breadwinners of their households. I'll give a pre-COVID example. Uh, let's say you have a partner, and let's say that that partner is great, which I've actually already found to be a pretty big assumption. Let's say that you feel like you've got a pretty okay split of work. You share pickups and drop-offs, you share who stays home with the kids on days off, you share cooking, cleaning, etc. But what about all the other stuff? Who thinks about what the kids are going to eat for lunch? Who schedules doctor's appointments? Who knows what day schools is going to are going to be closed? Who knows what the next thing the child needs developmentally is or sort of what what's coming next? Who buys the birthday presents for the birthday parties that are coming up? Who reviews homework, plans, and packs for family trips? And now, think about how many more decisions you're making or how many more things need to be coordinated or thought through in advance with coronavirus considerations. If you're already splitting this load, I applaud you. But for many families, that isn't the case. If you're not doing it already, share this mental load. Uh, I have a link on my website to a worksheet that can be a great jumpstart to this conversation. One example of a thing that I did was I put a checklist on our door of who needed what in order to leave the house in the morning. Because I realized that I was taking on the mental burden of having to make sure that everyone was ready in the morning, even on the days that my husband was doing drop-off. With that list on the door, we could both make sure that everyone had everything that they needed without me having to bear that burden. Okay, so that is disappear parent guilt, self-care days, find a community, and share the mental load. For your teens, remember that just existing as a parent on your team makes your teams better. You are organized. You need to set boundaries. You must have some sort of work-life balance. Being this role model helps everyone, even if they don't know that you're role modeling it. So for example, last year, my team had an offsite that I brought my family to. And in order for me to be available for dinner and bedtime each evening, our day ended at five and we didn't meet up for dinner until like seven or 7.30. My team brought this up as one of the things that they loved about our offsite schedule, not knowing that I had created that break because I needed to balance running the offsite with being present for my family. When I told them the reason why the break existed, they saw that not only um, that not only did it benefit me and my family, but it also benefited them by giving them a chance to recharge before evening activities. Finally, let's talk about what colleagues can do. Colleagues with or without children have lots of power and ability to be better teammates and make companies better for all parents. First, if you don't have children or if a majority of your team is childless, don't make parent stuff weird. Uh, these days, I take many meetings with a child on my lap. I often have to pause for a moment to answer a question or hear about something urgent that my child needs to share. And I am, in fact, not sorry when I need to pause a meeting momentarily or hop off a camera for a minute or two to start a Zoom meeting for a child. You can also ask parents what they prefer you do when a child walks into the room. So I actually dislike it greatly when somebody asks if I need to go or if I need to attend to my child. Trust me, I see them standing next to me saying, mom, 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 over and over again. I am not answering them because I do not need to, and they will probably walk away within the next two minutes. Other parents might feel like they can't interrupt a meeting in order to respond to their child, so they may prefer that folks ask them uh, if they need a pause. Please, though, under no circumstances should you say to a parent, especially a mother, it looks like you're busy now, I'll let you go. Second, be friendly. So this one's so simple, but just asking how folks are, right? Checking in with each other shows that you care. It shows that parents and just all individuals are appreciated and supported at work. Third, make your voice heard. Parents are so tired right now. 
They're so, so, so very tired. And yet, while we're already wearing many hats and trying to balance multiple full-time jobs at once, um, we're also trying to hold it together and remain emotionally available for our children and mentally available for work and colleagues. Um, and at the same time, we're also being tasked with identifying exactly what we need, what solutions work for us, voicing our concerns on teams or with teammates when unrealistic expectations are being proposed. And many are fearful that bringing their whole self to work right now and voicing these concerns could put them at risk of losing their jobs. Did someone suggest everyone work late or schedule a late meeting? See someone criticizing a parent for needing to take time because their child is sick or they have a child who needs to be homeschooled or supervised? Parents feel guilty. And parents are concerned about how long about how long we can continue to pull this whole charade off. It's helpful if others on the team speak up as well and say something like, I know this meeting is running over and we want to be respectful of those with a hard stop. Or is there any chance we can schedule this meeting earlier? I know it doesn't work for everyone's calendar. Or even... Let's record this so teammates who aren't here or can't be fully present can catch up later. And a special hack for parents, if you're catching up later, watch it on 1.5 or 2 times speed. And finally, if someone uses a word or a concept that you don't know, Google it. I like to think that most of us are pretty good at Googling, and we generally like learning new things. Um, so if you don't understand childcare costs or sleep regressions or anything else that a parent on your team mentions, just Google it. There are some really great resources out there to learn more. So this final summary is normalize it, be nice, speak up, and use Google. While there are specific things that colleagues can do to help parents, these actions benefit everyone and makes teams stronger. These suggestions really boil down to increasing empathy, curiosity, and an interest in your colleagues and their lives, and a desire to understand one another. When these factors are incorporated into a team's DNA, it leads to stronger, more effective teams that can support and understand one another more effectively. You might speak up about something to support parents on your team, but you're also learning to recognize situations where different accommodations are helpful. You're learning how to support teammates by asking questions and figuring out how to, be, how to be a better ally on your team. And teams that are strong in these areas help attract and retain more diverse talent. Some days it all works and some days it certainly doesn't. Some days I can give 100% to both areas and others I feel like I'm letting my child, my children or my job down. It's important though for all of us as a community, as developers, as colleagues, as peers, and as managers to think about this. Don't let us lose a generation of talented working mothers. In a recent conversation with Anna McKenzie, one of the co-authors of the Parenting Playbook, she said that how we work and what work looks like is a social construct that hasn't changed in years. And it's true, right? And the same can be said for our schools and how we educate our children. I don't know what the solutions are here, but there is no box that we can check that will accommodate everyone. There is no guidebook for how companies, individuals, or peers can best handle this. We need to throw everything on the floor and figure out how to reimagine it. Definitely for now, but maybe also for forever. We're getting ready for potential future waves of COVID-19. And even for schools and daycares that are reopening, parents are just waiting and trying to stay prepared for whatever will come their way next. And that vigilance is exhausting. The main question on my mind is which will happen first? Will parents break or will we, or will we be able to find a new way of working? And for parents, all I can say from one parent to another is that you are doing a great job. Thank you.
Wow, Allison, thank you so much. That was incredible. I, 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 you did a great job, and you are doing a great job. That was fantastic. I think it's so important for us to have a little more empathy for different perspectives when it comes to working in tech and working in all other areas. So let's give you a second to have a drink of water, have a, have a quick breath. Um, I'm going to share with you the results of today's final developer dilemma. Do people prefer working in an office or remotely? The results are in. So, 85% of you prefer working remotely, and 15% prefer working in an office. Folks, feel free to throw in any questions you might have for Allison into the YouTube chat. In the meantime, Allison, thank you once again. Um, as a non-parent myself, I'm curious, do you have any further reading or maybe a parent-driven dev podcast episode that you'd recommend for me to be able to get started and learn more? Yeah. Um, oh, man, to do like a super shameless plug here, uh, the parent-driven yeah. <laughs> parent driven development podcast is if you look at the episode list, um, we just cover a, a variety yeah. of, of different topics on there. So it's good to get sort of a, a bite-sized sense and, and dig into anything there. Um, I think also there are, uh, if your company has a parenting channel, um, I know that a number of folks at GitHub uh, join the parenting channel just to get a sense, even if they're not parents, to get a sense of like what parents are talking about, what parents are dealing with every day. Um, you know, and I think the other thing is just encouraging uh, sometimes it's just about encouraging parents that you work with that, that you want to know about these things that you feel comfortable sharing. I think there are a lot of parents that worry about what it means to be a parent at work, especially a mom, um, right? They worry about how that may change folks' perceptions of them. Um, and so just sort of being open and saying that you want to hear more about that, you want to like hear what's going on is, uh, is a great way to get started. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Well, uh, I'm afraid we don't have uh, any more questions for today, but folks, Allison, where, how can we reach you? What's the best way? Twitter, I imagine. Yes, Twitter. Um, I'm at Ali underscore P on, uh, on Twitter. Um, so that is the best place to reach me. Excellent. Well, thank you so much once again from all of us. Um, we're about to go into a short break once again before our final talk of the day because somehow this day flew by. Um, <laughs> so don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be back in about 17 minutes at 8 o'clock CEST PM. Um, see you in a bit. Thanks again, Allison. Thank you. Thanks, Allison.